Hey friends, and welcome to my book nook. For those that are new here or don't know me, my name's Brittany Barton. I'm an elementary music teacher and middle school musical theater teacher by day, and I do booktube on the side, and this is my wonderful booktube channel where we talk all things thriller and horror, sometimes historical fiction and romance, sometimes a little bit of fantasy. I just like to read everything. And that's all you need to know before we go into today's video. So please make sure to like, subscribe, and stick around if you're interested in seeing more about this channel. So in today's video, I figured I would share. So I am a huge organizational productivity planner -y type person. Like I'm kind of obsessed with it. I have a productivity channel, which if you're interested in that sort of thing, I'll totally link it under here. But I'm obsessed with that stuff. And so I like to track book data. I like to track a lot of things. I have a lot of things that I'm tracking. And so I figured today's video would just be showing you my Airtable database of like what I'm tracking and whatnot. I will say I was a little bit inspired to start one through a couple of other people that have different trackers. And there is one that I still use regardless of whether I make mine or not. So I'll share them down below. But I have adapted mine for what I like, and so I'm just going to go through it. If you want the template that I am sharing, I have a, a free and blank template of everything I share today underneath this video. If you want it, go have it. It's yours if you want to track with me. And so without further ado, let's go into how I track and analyze and organize my data and my books and all that jazz. I'm also gonna make a minor announcement of editing Rainy because you might not know this already, but if you see my nose twitching a lot like that, because in this video, I noticed I did it all the time, I have Tourette's. I actually have been diagnosed with Tourette's when I was very young, and I have a couple of facial twitches and other things that I do because of that. Uh, and it's nothing major, but it's just part of who I am. So if you see my nose twitching a lot or other random things like that, I have Tourette's, cannot help it. Back to the video. Okay, friends, so let's talk through everything that I track in my Airtable spreadsheet because why not? We're just going to start from the beginning. Okay, so the first thing I'm tracking, obviously, is my reads for 2022, my reading tracker. And so anytime I start a book, I put it on here, and then I put the author, and then that's all I fill out if I haven't finished the book. Once I finished the book, I put the date it was completed. I check off whether I read it physically, whether I read it as an ebook, whether I read it as an audiobook. And as you can tell, I really love listening to audiobooks, but reading them physically at the same time, it's my jam. I put the number of pages, and down here it'll track how many pages I've read this year so far. I put my rating, um, and then I do genre. I do one to two different genres, and then the type, whether it's an adult or a young adult. The publication date, because I like to know how, when I'm reading these books what years they're in. Is it a reread? Is it a part of a series? Is it a new author to me? Is it from, is it written by a person of color or an LGBTQ plus author? And uh, what is the author's gender? So as you can tell, I'm kind of sucking in the POC and LGBTQ area and I need to do better in that and I can recognize that already. So I'm gonna get to work on that. But I do, I read mostly from women. I read occasionally from men, but I have a non-binary person. So that's pretty cool. All right, so this is what I track. This makes it really easy to track at the end of the year because uh, I noticed or I know that in here you can filter out different things. So for example, I could hide specific fields and then only look for things. I could filter by adding a condition saying that if the title contains blank, only show me that. It's really easy to filter stuff out. But this is all the stuff I track when I'm reading a book. Then we go over to January TBR and I am going to change this a little bit by the time that you get this blank copy because I want to be able to use this for my TBR for all year so that I can see what TBRs I finished and didn't finish for like challenges for videos. So I'm going to add another section over here and I'm going to put month and then I'm going to just put multiple select and then I'm going to really quickly add Jan. And then if I add that, instead of making this January TBR, I'm going to name this monthly TBR and then now I can know that all of these were for January and I'll just go down here and go through January that way you are able to keep track of it all in one area and so then if you like me want to look at like which month you did really well at following your TBR and which month you didn't now you can check but I put the title here, the author, the purpose, like why I read it. So for example, this is my TBR Friends theme challenge that I did it for. I read some for Winterween. I read one for a book club. I read one for a secret TBR, uh, Winterween, all these things. So that's what you do for this one. 
Then we have my physical TBR, and this is books that I have on my shelf that I have not read, and I will not lie, it is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of books. It's a lot of books. Um, but I put the name, the author, the genre, and then also I want to remember ebooks that I have because I always forget about ebooks that I own. And then audiobooks. Do I own an audiobook of this? Uh, so yeah, I just like to do that so that I know what I have. And then if I am trying to look for a book, on my shelf, for example, and I'm doing my friend's theme challenge and it says pick a thriller novel that you haven't read yet, I could just go on here and filter out thrill th thriller and then I have all of my options for me right there. So, really, really, really love this. And we have my 2022 TBR. I will say this is a complete work in progress. I have not added all of the books at all that I want to do, so this is just what I've added so far. So I'm going to add the title, the author, is it part of a series, and am I predicting it to be a five-star read? Uh, so these are just some examples of books that I have put in here so far that I want to read in 2022, but like I said, there are a lot more books I want to read in 2022 that I have not added, so we're not going to really count this right now, but that's what you could do if you want to track reads that you want to get to in 2022. Then we have series I'm reading. And so this is any series I have on my shelf that I have either not read or have started to read so that I know how many series I have, which I think, no, I added, good, I added the ones I just got. But like you can see, for example, like A Court of Thorns and Roses, I'm on book two. Jade series, I'm on book one. I say what book series I'm on. And then I think I have options of like all the way to like book five. If there's more than book five, you could add on to that. But I have like DNF finished, haven't started. And so I have a bunch of series, as you can tell. And I haven't started most of them. So I kind of need to get to that. But this is a pl great place to track your series if you're wanting to know like how you do a series. Then I have my book wish list. This is basically like the books that are on my Amazon wish list slash books I want to add to my Amazon wish list that I want to get soon so that when I go book shopping, I can open my Airtable and literally, and I will always alphabetize it when I'm doing this because when I go to my second and Charles bookstore, it's alphabetized. And so you can filter this or sort uh, by author. And so like alphabetically, and so that's what I do when I go into the bookstore. But I put what it is, which, oh, I actually bought this. Heck yeah. Um, so I put what the title is, the author, do I want it ASAP? Have I purchased it yet? And then this was literally just so I could link to my Amazon wish list on one of these like links. Um, so that's why I didn't fill it out. So you don't have to worry about that. But yeah, so as you can see, I have a lot of books that I want. I have purchased some, so that's pretty awesome. And yeah, that's what my book wish list is for. Then we have anticipated 2022 book reads. And this is different than my 2022 TBR because I can be excited for books that I want to read in 2022 that were not from 2022. So this is specifically books that are coming out in the year of 2022. And as you can see, I have 55. And those were all in my video that I actually have a video on this. So if you want to see my most anticipated reads of 2022, I'll link that video under here. But I put the title, the author, the release date, which I really love having that because now I know what books I need to get when. And as you can tell, a crap ton of them came out in January. And I have only bought Reckless Girls, Weather Girl, Reminders of Him I pre-ordered. Um, and then there's a lot that I haven't yet. So I kind of need to get on that. And then if you look, February has a, oh my God, February has how many? 10. And then March is, in like five-ish or six-ish. April's like okay. May's okay. June's nothing. July is a shit ton. And like July is also my birthday and these two come out on my birthday. So that's kind of excited. Um, and then August doesn't have that many. And then I have nothing in September or October and one in November and none in December. So a couple of these months are going to be really crazy. And then over here I'll put if I read it or not. So I can keep track of like if I actually read the books that I was excited to read in 2022. So we shall see. Then I have a section for five star predictions because I did ha make a video which I will link under here as well as for my five star predictions for the year and I had 25 books that I thought would be five stars in 2022 and so far I have read three of them and one was a four star and two were five stars. So we're off to a good start but I put the title, the author, the rating, and then five star. I just wanted this extra column just because even though I can see it here it just makes it really clear and really quickly like I can just count up okay how many check marks do I have that were five stars? Awesome. I got this many. I got 80% of it correct like you know so that's why I have that but 
I have a lot of really awesome books on here. I'm super excited to continue reading this list. Plus, I wanted to have this list separate because I'm planning on releasing a video at the end of the year where I share, like, all the five stars that I read. And I have, like, little vlog snippets from when I was reading them. And so this way, I'm making sure every month I'm adding at least two or three of these books onto my TBR so that I'm actually getting through them and I can make that video successfully. Then we have quarterly book haul, which I am not on track of this at all. I have like 15 more books I got to add to this. I know it's January, friends. I'm terrible with buying books. Anyway, so this, I want to start doing quarterly book hauls on my channel. And so I'm just going to release one in like March, in June, in September. I think that's right. In June. Yeah, uh, September and then December. And so I'm going to be putting... The title, the author, where I got it, and there's a couple of places that I put on here from Second and Charles, which is my thrift bookstore, Books A Million, Book of the Month, if it was gifted to me, or if it was from Amazon, or if it was from Pango Books, which is where I buy a lot of other books. It's like a thrift store for eBay. And then the month that I hauled it in. And so this is just an example of some that I have picked up so far, but I have not finished adding some of the other books I've gotten this month. But that way you can see if you want to track books that you're hauling and also see how bad you're doing at like buying books too much... This is for you. Then I just have a section for booktubers that I follow or I like to follow. This is not accurate either. I have a couple others. And then am I caught up on their stuff or not? I will say like oh, some of these people that like I'll probably never catch up on. But the ones that are checked are like my typical like go-to faves like Gabby, Chandler, Kayla, Megs with Books, Riley Marie, which I am caught up on now. Um, different people like this. So and I have a link to their URL. That's just for me personally. But if you want that you can have it. But yeah, so that's how I like organize all my life and things. And like I said, I have given you a free copy that you can use and it is completely blank. I hope that this was helpful. And that's basically how I organize and track everything. I know it's a lot of stuff I'm like tracking, but I'm interested in that sort of thing. Plus, if I'm doing this now as I'm going, then at the end of the year when I go to look for my stats and stuff, Airtable makes it really easy where you can filter out different things. So if I want to filter out how many books I read by people of color, I could find that really quickly. Or how many people like by gender if I wanted to do that or by... I don't know, by five star reads or four star reads. Like I can figure that out really quickly because I have it all in their table. So I'm excited to continue to use it for my end of the year stats. But I hope this was helpful. Like I said, if you want that template, it's right underneath this video. Go get it. It's yours. Happy reading. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.